Hmm. Looks like we're having a problem. Um, the video is not working on our screen. I know you must be able to see it. Um, which is a bit disconcerting when you're doing this and you can't see any, anything. Um, hi Laura, I hope you can see me as you say. Oh, the old 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Bible study. Hey, Jen, Ed, shall I pray first? No, yes. Don't we? Um, we pray, and of course, all for the people um, who, are, who are suffering at the moment with the virus, for the end of the virus. Um, so we're going to start with prayer. Um, good to see you. Good to see Roz there. And I saw Indrani was around and Bob. It's great to see you all. Um, and uh, uh, praise God for you. Continue to praise God for you. But I'm going to start with a prayer before we begin. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you that you are a God who is moving across this nation. We pray now by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, that you will bring an end to this virus. We pray for all those at this moment that are suffering with it. We pray for healing for them, Lord. We pray for all those, Lord, that have lost a loved one. We pray, Lord, that you help them in their grief and in their mourning that you draw close to them, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you help us to be sensitive to each other. Lord, you are a God who sees what's going on. And Lord, I pray for those at this moment in time maybe feel lonely or isolated, those that are suffering from mental illness, those that are just struggling with the situation at the moment, those that are struggling with, the, with teaching their children, or Lord, with even sending their children back to school, we pray for them. We pray for teachers, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will protect and guard them. Pray for those in the National Health Service. So Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord Jesus, you will sweep with your spirit across this nation, across this world, and you will bring, Lord Jesus, peace, health, restoration. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So today we're looking at chapters 10 and 11. Uh, I did put them on earlier. Too long to read, so I hope some of you um, have looked at them, or at least have it open in front of you as yep. we sort of briefly look through. So chapter 10 um, is about um, another mighty angel from heaven. We've got chapter 11, which are the famous two witnesses, and then the seventh trumpet at last. <laughs> so, um, Laura, so we've got an angel that arrives. We have. This is the final angel. And this final angel, angel is actually to announce the final judgment. It's announcing the final okay. judgment. Um, this is the point um, when those who love sin, those that are wicked, if you like, have almost chosen their path. We're coming to the end end of the kind of chapter of sort of things. So people have chosen their path. Um, you know, so this is this is what the angel is. And this angel actually is shown um, to, to be a particularly high-ranking angel, or an angel of power. And you see in the scripture, you'll see that it talks about it straddling the land and the sea. That's talking about how large God is. But the... The enemy is small, but God is large. Isn't that just, uh, I mean, I don't know how, I think people must feel that at the moment, actually, with the virus, mustn't it? The enemy, a reminder that God is large and the enemy is small. The virus is small compared to God. Yes. That's what we've got to remember. And every yeah. time when we've done Revelation, there's been something about God being in control here. It is. It's all yeah. about God being in control. Yeah. It's all about God being in charge, isn't it? It's yeah. always the case. They're reminding us constantly that actually we have the victory, even when it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Um, I like verse 4 which talks about the, the thunder, seven thunders and it reminds us that God um, is not only in our small in the small whispers but in the thunders and this actually connects back this verse to Psalm 29 which I'm going to just quickly read a few verses from verse 3 to 9 mm. um, where it says the voice of the Lord is over the waters the God of glory thunders the Lord thunders over the mighty waters the voice of the Lord is powerful the voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, siren like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. Something there of the mightiness and greatness mm. of God, isn't it? Yeah. We were just talking about actually yeah. that this God is amazing and great and majestic, isn't it? That's so right, then, yeah. We have the scrolls, don't we? And then also, just in that oh, section yeah. there, it talks about the seven thunders. Um, mm. John is instructed not to write down what he's being told. Mm. And I think that also 
confirms to us that not everything is revealed to us. There'll no. always be things that no. we don't know. No. And there's a timing for everything. And there's other places in the scripture that we're told that we won't know. Like we won't know the time and hour Jesus comes back. And uh, and there's, there's Daniel, who was it, it's uh, he wasn't allowed to reveal everything in Daniel actually. And there's those places where God says actually there was a timing when things will be revealed to us, and we yeah. have to wait for that time and be patient for that. And actually, I think sometimes God tells us what we can cope with. Maybe we couldn't cope with knowing everything. Yeah. Just I, I don't want to know everything in advance. No, he gives us what we can cope with each day. Exactly. Which is only, <laughs> if, we, if we knew where what God was going to do with us all the way through. I mean, my goodness, I, uh, that would terrify me actually yeah. to know what God was going to do yeah. some of the stuff. Because you don't realise you can get through things unless you've got God with you through it. Um, but if you're looking at something cold, it could be yeah. really frightening, yeah. can't it? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we had the first scroll that was opened in chapter five, revealing judgment against um, against uh, evil. Sorry. And then there's this little scroll, isn't there? Yeah. Little scroll. And it says in verse six, there will be no more delay, you know, in this judgment. Yeah. Like you said earlier, there's no turning back no. from this point um, onward. No, this is it. Um, this is the time. Um, so we talked about, obviously, said that sometimes... You know, we're not going to know everything and that life is a mystery. But one day we'll have all those questions answered. We will. Um, but also John, you know, is commissioned to preach. And uh, scholars debate a bit about what might be in the scroll or not. Yeah. Um, you know, some judgment, people say it's judgment or maybe it's what John has got to preach. And that's why he's got a little scroll because it's, it's manageable for him. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the really unusual element here is that John is eating the scroll. Yes, he is. He's eating the scroll, and in some commentaries that would say that, um, some commentaries it says it's because actually the word of God is sweet to the believer, um, but you know, there's also an aspect of there of it becoming bittersweet, because there's the judgment on those that are not believers, isn't there? Yeah, that's yeah. That's in the middle of that. And it also harks back to Ezekiel, where he also had to eat a scroll. Yeah. Um, so there's sort of different elements to it, so there's the idea that actually we need to feed ourselves with the word of God. Exactly. And as you say, it's um, yeah. sweet to taste. Um, us, uh, you know, yeah. as well. Um, yeah. But God's revelation can be bittersweet. It's judgment and mercy, isn't it? It you is. Know, so. so those that do not know Jesus um, and those that come for, come into judgment and justice and have rejected Him, rejected yeah. God, and don't want that and don't trust Him, um, it's not a good thing for them, is it? When God comes back, it's a frightening thing. Um, you know, and in uh, was it ten four? Um, the things to come, and there's a revealing, isn't there? The, the, often the revealing is things at night, and it's all about trusting God. And then ten seven, we have the mystery of God will be accomplished, meaning even evil is going to be dealt with, justice will be done. There will be a new story, a story that God is putting in place, um, and that we are to wait for Jesus to come in His glory. And I was thinking actually about when I was reading that, you know, many years ago I had a vision of when. Um, I was uh, th thinking about my family, actually, some of my family who don't know Jesus or people that don't know Jesus that I really love. But I was, I was lying actually on my bed and I was really praying, Lord, come back, come back, because I really want to see Jesus. And we should want to see Jesus come back. We should want that. Yeah. But um, there was a point where I almost felt myself almost go in the air and look down. And when I looked down, the Lord said to me, look who's there. And I looked down, you know, and there was someone that I loved that didn't know Jesus. And I suddenly realised, oh. We have to go out there, we have to preach the gospel, we have to preach the truth and hope and pray for our family and friends. And, you know, um, it, our, our faith is, is personal, but it actually it's also corporate. We are out, we should be out there telling people about Jesus, yeah. telling them there is hope and being people of hope, you know, and leading them to, to salvation, shouldn't we? Because we're all witnesses. And of course, our next chapter we're going to is about the two witnesses. Um, and these, I mean, these are scary and amazing, uh, this, this sort of in imagery. Um, it starts off actually with measuring the temple. Um, and I think, yeah. again, there it's showing God is in charge. He owns it. He controls it. And yeah. that's just a, you know, one of the massive themes of Revelation. And one of the commentaries talks about actually the measuring being at God building a wall of protection to keep those of us that believe him spiritually safe. So it talks about that. Actually, what, that's what God is sort of saying there. It's actually those that believe in me are spiritually safe. Those that are inside, the believers are yeah. safe. Those that are outside have rejected God. So this is almost, you know, the same God protects us who, yeah. who are yeah. his own, even though we go through persecution, because yeah. we will go through persecution, um, it's, you know, in, in, in times. And, uh, and there's more persecution now than there have been, actually, for Christians. So, but God will protect us spiritually. 
you know, even if we die for our faith, we have eternal life. Yeah. We have eternity. Yeah. There's more than this world. Yeah. Mm. Um, thinking about the temple here, again, it's um, lots of different um, theologians have different ideas, but one suggestion is that the temple refers here to the fulfillment of the prophecies by Daniel and Jesus and Paul regarding uh, the Antichrist and or the abomination of desolation. And in Matthew 24, Jesus actually talks, um, actually uses that phrase and talks about the end times. So mm. I would, you know, recommend perhaps looking that up. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Jesus said, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet of Daniel, let the reader understand that and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So, you know, this yeah. is about this final judgment. I think last time we were talking we were very much about Satan being the person, Satan, the fallen angel, mm. actually a reminder there that actually, you know, there's, there is evil that exists yeah. in this world as well as there's good, there's evil. And that's, that's part yeah. of that. And it talks about, um, it gives another time. So they will trample on the holy city for 42 months. So that's three and a half years. Yeah. And... That three and a half, of course, is um, half of seven, which may indicate, because numbers are really important in Revelations, I think we've established that, if you remember seven, of course, is yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So this indicates, actually, at this point, it's incomplete. It's not perfect as such. It's not, um, you know, um, so it's, yes, it's not perfect. That yeah. Um, you know, and just say about those two witnesses, two witnesses, um, there is a suggestion, of course, that they almost represent Moses and Elijah, actually, um, Moses, of course, representing law, um, Elijah representing prophetic. We saw that in Transfiguration, if you remember, there was uh, when Jesus stood on the mountain and they appeared before him, and it was representing law and prophecy. And Jesus is the fulfillment of law and prophecy, so he's the fulfillment. Um, so there's a representation yeah. there, isn't there, of something? So these two witnesses, you know, they're standing um, in the public place and they're unique and they're continually empowered, it says, by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and no one can actually, you know, touch them. They have special protection from God. And if someone tries to destroy them, it says that they're devoured. Um, mm. They devour them, devour them with flames. Um, yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's all in God's timing. So as, you know, it goes on, they're also, it says that they're causing torment on people. And that is, it's not torment, let's say, physically, but they're telling people the truth. Yeah, they're There's proclaiming and they're witnessing the truth, and people find that really difficult yeah. to hear. Um, and so, you know, it says that they're really happy when they're destroyed. <laughs> um, but also, you know, as we look at verses seven to to ten here, and as they, it says, when they have finished their testimony, so not before, when they have finished what God has called them to do, then um, it says that the beast comes. And attacks them and overpowers them, but it's all in God's timing. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a sense where it, and you know it, they're sort of invincible, but also vulnerable at the same time. There's this they win, they lose, they win thing going on. It's where truth is victorious, isn't it? Um, and it's about the importance of truth. We're all seeking the truth, aren't we? Yeah. The truth of who Jesus is, who God is. So you know, in Jesus, we're all seeking that, and it's about that aspect there that they're doing that. because of course it all mirrors you know jesus's life yeah. because obviously they were dead uh, for three days and then brought back to life um and it also says you know this was seen by the world so yeah. i think that really links um to us at this time you know it's about our modern mass media how else could it be seen by the yeah. world absolutely you know but it can now they didn't know that then <laughs> Scary, but they, they knew it would happen at a time where we could all witness it yeah. as a whole world and I think that's you know amazing to see these things come true. Yeah, it is. And um, you know, in, in eleven thirteen, it's it's talking really about everything will glorify God. And you saw that in that psalm you read earlier. Everything will glorify God. That's so glory and splendor of yeah. God. Everything is about that magnificence of God, um, and glorifying because He is God and He is love. And actually, I thought I was thinking about that. I think somehow. Uh, just just on that, that's all I said. When you think about it, everything, seems to be about God going, "How brilliant I am," but actually it. Although God is going, I'm brilliant, it sounds slightly kind of almost um, like God is a bit of a megalomaniac, do you know what I mean? But actually, it's actually about the fact that God is love, isn't it, actually? This is about glorifying love. God is love. So God is saying, glorify me because I am love. I'm the answer to everything. I am complete, you know. And in him, we have our completion. We have you know, yeah. the creation and the creator, isn't it, um, coming together. 
Um, so although it can sound, I think, very like God saying, look how wonderful I am, actually he is. Yeah. But he's not wonderful in a kind of pious, sinful way. He's wonderful yeah. in a way of doing I'm wonderful and I am pure love. Pure love. It's perfection there, you yeah. know. Um, and he's saying, all he's saying to the world is, come and be with me. And I'm going to give you the choice. You know, and that, I've talked before about choice being such a gift. It's such a gift. And you know, God is saying, I, you have the choice to be with me or not. You know, because um, I love you. Yeah. Because I love you, I give you a choice. Um, but can you imagine what that love of God must feel like? Really perfect love. Absolutely perfect love. That intensity. When we meet him face to face. You know, when we meet our God, our creator, face to face, I mean, how powerful is that going to be? Yeah. 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 And how much does he love us in the world that he continually gives us chances to come to him? Continually yeah. says, please come to him. It's almost like a, a begging lover, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, love me, love me, love me. But actually, it's because he loved me because, do you know what? I'm going to show you the best. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It's so hard for us to understand when we've never experienced it things, is. you know, like that. And when things are falling apart, and at the moment for people, I'm very mm. aware things are falling apart for them. Um, this is the message of hope. This is the message we preach. And we need to preach as God's people, yeah. even when things are really tough, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, we need we are meant to be, you know, witnesses. And God calls us home when we, you know, it's all about his timing and plan when we have finished. Um uh, I had a friend who used here, to say, you know, know that um, the reason he's on earth is because his job isn't finished yet. And yeah. actually he died a few years ago and I just thought oh, he'd finished his job, you know, yeah. and he had a lovely attitude to the kind of, um, to, to dying actually, yeah. really, you know, it's that kind yeah. of like, my job is not finished yet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it says in verse 14, the second woe has passed and the third woe is coming soon. Woe, woe, woe. And then the seventh trumpet, angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven. So, what's this uh, next trumpet about? It says, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. The king has arrived. This is about the king arriving. The Messiah is here. The king is here. Finally, we're there. Judgment is complete. God is in charge. You know, this is, this is what our future is. So is this um, when Jesus comes to reign on yeah, earth? Yeah, this is, yeah, the king has arrived. Mm -hmm. The arrival of the king's trumpeting is, the seven trumpeting mm -hmm. is the king's right. So there's this wonderful sense, isn't there, that. And you have in 16, of course, that, again, the elders. You remember the elders, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles representing everyone? So we have that as well. So it's just, but it can, again, imagine it. Imagine what it feels like. It's yeah, it's all in, more worship, which is fantastic. Mm. It says in verse 18, the nations were angry. I'm taking that as because, you know, people are still in rebellion and not wanting to yeah. surrender. Even even when God does this, so many things, you know, um, people still don't believe it, do they? They still mm. don't get it. They still reject God. That's the amazing thing. And they will continue to reject God. And, um, I was reading something earlier, actually, because well, I'm going to preach on this week anyway. Um, you know, and it was just talking about sort of uh, Elijah, which I'm going to preach on, so I've got to give to Mama. I don't want to ruin it. But actually, it was it was amazing that he'd seen all these miracles and he still didn't trust God. And there's this moment where he still doesn't trust God in those his miracles. But you see that with the apostles. You see that with the, you know, how many times do we see How many times in your life have you seen a miracle? And we very often, you know, something, God has done something. Yeah. You thought only God could do that. Yeah. I know that was you, God, they say, don't you? It's true. Yeah. So I know that was you, God. And actually, we then forget, we go on in our lives, and then we kind of like, oh my goodness, you know, God actually just turned off again, you know, and we're surprised by it. But actually, God is never passive in our life, is he? He's always active. We might not feel it, but we know it because his hand is on our life, yeah. and he promises And we're us. often not watching, we're we're listening, not, we're not watching paying we're listening. attention. It feels like being in class, doesn't it? It does, paying attention. Yeah, and God's trying to teach us things, yeah. you know, and in, in the world at the moment, he's teaching us something. And we've said before, what are we going to take um, out from this as we we turn back into the world? You yeah. know, our worlds have become very small at the moment as they get like What are we going to take back? How are we going to be as a community? How are we going to be as God's people? How are we going to preach the gospel? How are we going to bring hope? How are we going to, are we going to live? Yeah, live the faith in a different way, worshiping with our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So the verse 19 um, then talks about God's temple in heaven was opened and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And there came flashes of lightning and rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake and severe hailstorms. And the Ark of Covenant in the Old Testament is the most sacred treasure. Yeah, I love that well, it's where God's sacred. throne, when it was on earth it was like yeah. God's throne, you know, and so that's in the temple and it's emphasising his faithfulness, exactly. his love, his judgement. And again, the lightning and thunder demonstrated God's presence. And this obviously links back to also Mount Sinai, yeah. when the Ten Commandments were given in Exodus 19. And um, the, again, I mean, I could read it, but again, you've got all massive clouds, lightning, thunder, yeah. you know, smoke, and they're standing at the bottom, um, you know. And it, Moses said, come and meet the presence of God, you know. Yeah. And how terrifying, you know, and amazing that would have yeah. been at the same time. Yeah, and a great thing, of course, about the presence of God is that the temple was torn when Jesus died, which means we can enter into the presence of God in mm -hmm. the Holy Holies and Temple. There's a curtain that's torn, and when he died, there was a, a storm, wasn't there, where, where the graves were opened, actually, and people came, rose from them. And, you know, and actually, we can enter into the presence of God. So I think from this, I just want to say, let's enter into the presence of God. Let's really do that in our lives, actually. And as we we turn into our lives as we as we are the church let's get more about the presence it's the presence of god that changes and as we encounter that that changes us and changes our world and changes our community it's his tangible presence of god which you know is amazing and we should expect it to be to be with us as yeah. well you yeah. know this is this is what god is saying god is saying do you know what if you're in my presence it's okay yeah. it's okay I'm in charge. If you keep in my presence, you know, if you don't, if you turn to me, if you, if you, I would, yeah, yeah. protect and guard you and keep you safe, whatever happens, yeah. whatever happens. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Mm. Lots to think about. Let us end um, with prayer about the things that we have thought about um, tonight. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the technology to do this, to discuss, to share, to consider your word. Lord, may we ingest your word, Lord, digest it so that we have confidence to proclaim it. May we consider how we can be a witness for you in every thought, every word. Lord, I just pray that we really take home with us this idea that we need to be in your presence all the time. It is only through transformation of being in your presence that we will be transformed and therefore all of those around us. So Heavenly Father, help us to take on board and think deeply about all of these things. Give us ears to hear your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And tomorrow 9am we'll be doing our morning prayer reflection with me and Paul. Um, I'm going to do Elijah tomorrow actually, the great prophet. And on Sunday I'm going to talk about Elisha. Because we should have been on our community fund day, so there's no scriptures or anything oh. down. So I've chosen to do Elijah on for the reflection of Elijah. But amazing prophets, and that's at nine o'clock tomorrow. If there are people you would like us to pray or situation we'll pray for tomorrow, please put them in the 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 um uh, you know what I mean the oh. chat chat. Thank you. <laughs> please put them in the chat so that we can be praying for them. Not only that, if anyone does want prayer ministry, uh, the prayer ministry team are offering are offering prayer um, through Zoom. So you, you need to send your email to me if you want a prayer ministry um, appointment and I would sort that out with Richard and um, Christine and then they will arrange a Zoom time and send you a, a contact of a Zoom time so that you can um, have a prayer ministry time with them and we're offering that um, throughout this time of coronavirus so uh, as long as we're locked up or you know not in church in that way please feel that you can actually ask for prayer we're here for you and that's that's really important that we do that so you're aware of that anyway okay yeah right Signing out. see you soon Bye -bye. next week what are we doing next week Levations. uh 12 and 13 12 and 13 so you could perhaps read it beforehand that'd be great bless you bye-bye